I am honored to be sharing the stage with someone who has always put people at the center of his work, Sir Elton John. You might be astonished to learn just how deep the connection between Elton John and Princess Diana truly was. In a recent private interview, Elton John bared his soul, sharing profound reflections on his close friendship with the late princess. He also acknowledged that, despite a prolonged period of discord, their care for each other remained undiminished. Additionally, Elton revealed that after Diana's untimely death, it was Prince Harry who stepped in to continue the bond his mother had formed with him. Listen now to Elton John's heartfelt revelations. In a heartfelt tribute, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle honored Sir Elton John in a video that was featured ahead of the singer's farewell tour, which was live-streamed on Disney+. The video, broadcast as part of the special event, served as a poignant recognition of John's remarkable career and his enduring impact on the lives of the royal family. In the video message, Prince Harry expressed his deep gratitude and affection for John, acknowledging the singer's significant role in his family's life. Thank you for being the friend that you were to my mum, Harry said, referring to the late Princess Diana, who had a close and lasting friendship with John. Harry's words conveyed not only appreciation for John's support during Diana's life, but also his ongoing friendship with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Harry's tribute extended beyond his own experiences, addressing the broader impact John has had on their family. Thank you for being our friend. Thank you for being a friend to our kids, Harry added, emphasizing the singer's continued presence and influence in their lives. This personal acknowledgement highlighted the special bond between John and the royal family, one that has persisted through different stages of their lives. The video also included a warm congratulations from both Harry and Meghan to John on his remarkable career. Even though this is officially your retirement, this will not be your last gig, we know that, but we love you, and congratulations on an incredible career, Harry said. This statement was not just a nod to John's legendary status in the entertainment industry, but also a recognition of his influence and legacy that extends beyond his music. Sir Elton John, who celebrated his 75th birthday in 2022, has had a long and distinguished career that has spanned several decades. His influence and contributions to music and culture are widely recognized, and his farewell tour marks the end of a significant chapter in his life as he steps away from touring. The heartfelt video from Harry and Meghan was a testament to John's enduring impact, not only in the music industry but also in the personal lives of those he holds dear. John's connection to the British royal family, particularly his friendship with Princess Diana, has been well documented. The singer's emotional performance at Diana's funeral, where he famously adapted the lyrics of Candle in the Wind to honor the late princess, further cemented his role as a close friend and supporter of the royal family. This performance was a deeply moving tribute that resonated with many and underscored the profound bond between John and Diana. Elton John's ties to the royal family began to solidify in the 1970s and 1980s when he regularly attended royal events and supported various charitable causes associated with the monarchy. One notable example of his involvement was his participation in events with Princess Margaret, Queen Elizabeth II's sister, and his performances at concerts organized for the Prince's Trust, a charity founded by Prince Charles. These occasions reflected John's commitment to supporting the royal family's charitable endeavors and his integration into the circle of royal associates. John's association with the royals took on a more personal dimension through his friendship with Princess Diana. Their bond began at a memorable event, Prince Andrew's 21st birthday party, held at Windsor Castle in 1981. According to reports, John was performing at the event, and when he arrived, the venue was sparsely populated, with only the dance band and Princess Diana present. The intimate setting led to a memorable interaction between the two. John recounts that they spent about 20 minutes dancing the Charleston alone on the floor, which marked the beginning of a significant and enduring friendship. 
This initial encounter with Diana laid the foundation for a close relationship that would continue throughout her life. In his 2019 autobiography, John described Diana as fabulous company, highlighting her role as a delightful dinner party guest and a person with a penchant for being candid and gossipy. John's reflections paint a picture of Diana as someone who was both engaging and open, qualities that contributed to their strong friendship. His account of Diana's willingness to share personal anecdotes and her candid nature reveals the deep trust and camaraderie that characterized their relationship. John's friendship with Diana was not limited to private gatherings. The singer's support for Diana was also evident in the public domain. His emotional performance at Diana's funeral, where he adapted the lyrics of Candle in the Wind to honor her, was a poignant tribute that resonated deeply with the public and further underscored his connection to the late princess. This act of tribute was not only a testament to Diana's impact on John, but also a reflection of the genuine affection and respect he held for her. Throughout the years, John maintained his ties with other members of the royal family. He attended several royal weddings and continued to support royal causes and charities. His consistent presence at royal events and his ongoing charitable work demonstrated his enduring commitment to the monarchy and his genuine relationships with its members. Sir Elton John's relationship with Prince Harry offers a unique glimpse into the enduring bonds formed between members of the British royal family and their close associates. Their friendship traces back to Prince Harry's early years and has evolved into a deep mutual respect and admiration. Elton John first met a young Prince Harry during a special lunch hosted by Diana, Princess of Wales, at Kensington Palace. The occasion was significant not only for the presence of John, but also for the guest list, which included the renowned fashion designer Gianni Versace. This early interaction was pivotal in establishing a connection between John and the young prince. John has fondly remembered Harry as being extremely shy and sweet during that time, a reflection of the prince's reserved nature as a child. John's observations of the young Harry reveal a deep appreciation for the prince's character. In his reflections, John noted the joy of witnessing Harry's growth from a shy boy into an adult who embodies the qualities admired by his late mother. According to John, Harry inherited Diana's warmth, sense of humor, and courage. These traits, John believes, have shaped Harry into someone who is not only approachable, but also committed to championing the causes he believes in. This description highlights the continuity of Diana's influence in Harry's life, manifesting in his public persona and personal values. One of the most remarkable qualities John attributes to Harry is his exceptional ability to make people feel comfortable and at ease. John has remarked that Harry possesses a rare talent for entering a room full of strangers and immediately putting them at ease. This trait, according to John, is reminiscent of Princess Diana's own social ease. In his autobiography, John detailed how Diana had a natural ability to make people feel entirely comfortable in her presence. Her social grace and empathetic nature were qualities that deeply resonated with John and contributed to his lasting admiration for her. The comparison between Harry and Diana in terms of their social skills underscores a shared legacy of warmth and approachability that has influenced both their public and private interactions. For John, this connection extends beyond mere friendship. It is a testament to the enduring impact of Diana's character on those who knew her and the subsequent generation. As John reflected on his relationship with Harry, he expressed his continued delight in seeing Harry evolve and carry forward the values and traits he admired in Diana. This personal connection, grounded in shared experiences and mutual respect, has been a cornerstone of their relationship over the years. John's admiration for Harry's ability to connect with people, combined with his recognition of the prince's commitment to social causes, illustrates the depth of their bond and the ongoing influence of Diana's legacy. Sir Elton John and Prince Harry's relationship extends beyond mere friendship. 
It encompasses a shared commitment to charitable causes and a mutual support for one another in the face of public scrutiny. Over the years, John has been involved in various charitable endeavors alongside Harry, highlighting their collaborative efforts to make a positive impact in the world. One notable instance of their partnership was John's performance at Prince Harry's wedding to Meghan Markle at Windsor Castle in 2018. This event was a significant moment, not only for the couple, but also for John, who has been a close friend of the royal family. The ro his presence and performance at the wedding underscored the deep connection he shares with Harry and his family, celebrating their union in a highly personal and meaningful way. Additionally, John was a guest at Prince William and Catherine Middleton's wedding in 2011, further solidifying his role as a trusted friend and supporter of the royal family. In 2019, John took to social media to defend Harry and Meghan against criticism surrounding their use of private jets. The controversy erupted when the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were accused of environmental hypocrisy after traveling by private jet to John's home in Nice. In a heartfelt Instagram post, John expressed his deep distress over what he described as a distorted and malicious account of the couple's stay. He highlighted that Harry's mother, Princess Diana, was one of his closest friends, which fueled his sense of obligation to protect Harry and his family from undue media intrusion. John's post was a passionate call to halt what he perceived as relentless and unfounded attacks on Meghan and Harry's character. He criticized the press for their untrue assassinations and urged them to cease their almost daily attempts to undermine the couple's reputation. This intervention by John reflects not only his personal commitment to defending his friends, but also his broader frustration with the media's treatment of public figures. Elton John and Princess Diana shared a close and deeply affectionate friendship that endured many highs and lows. However, their relationship faced significant strain in the months leading up to Diana's tragic death in 1997. This period, often referred to as The Deep Freeze by Tina Brown, the former editor of Vanity Fair and a noted royal author, was marked by Diana's growing estrangement from several of her longtime friends, including John. The term deep freeze aptly describes the emotional and social isolation that Diana experienced during this turbulent time. Her circle of confidants, once rich with personal and professional connections, began to contract. The strains were particularly evident in her relationships with close friends such as Elton John and Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York. This period of isolation was a stark contrast to the earlier years of Diana's life, which were characterized by a broad network of supportive relationships. In his autobiography, Elton John expressed concern for Diana's well-being during this phase. He noted with unease how Diana seemed to distance herself from a range of close friends who had previously provided honest and reliable counsel. Instead, she began surrounding herself with individuals who were less forthright and more inclined to tell her what she wanted to hear. This shift in her social circle, John observed, contributed to an unhealthy environment for Diana. John's worry was rooted in his understanding of the importance of genuine, candid friendships in navigating life's challenges. He recognized that Diana's decision to distance herself from honest friends was detrimental, both to her emotional health and her decision-making. By isolating herself from those who might offer constructive criticism or alternative perspectives, Diana risked creating an echo chamber where her personal struggles and decisions went unchecked. This period of tension between John and Diana was not merely a personal issue, but also reflected broader challenges Diana faced in her life. As she grappled with her changing public image and personal difficulties, her relationships became strained. The isolation she experienced was compounded by the intense media scrutiny and the pressures of her high-profile life. The fallout between Elton John and Princess Diana, as detailed by Tina Brown and further elaborated by John, centered around a controversial coffee table book intended to benefit John's AIDS Foundation. The book, 
which was to feature a blend of high-fashion photographs, including semi-nude male models, alongside images of members of the royal family, including Diana with her children, sparked significant tension between the two friends. According to Brown, the dispute arose when Diana expressed concern that the inclusion of her photograph in such a provocative context might upset Queen Elizabeth II. The royal family's strict protocols and public image considerations were always a sensitive topic, and Diana's apprehension about the potential fallout from the book was rooted in her deep respect for royal traditions and her desire to avoid public controversy. Elton John, who had previously been assured of Diana's support for the project, was taken aback by her sudden change of heart. Despite her initial enthusiasm and agreement to write a foreword for the book, Diana later withdrew her support. This decision, John claimed, was communicated to him in a formal and severe manner, and he responded by expressing his disappointment. He criticized Diana for the financial loss the foundation would suffer due to her withdrawal and the impact it would have on the AIDS charity's fundraising efforts. John's response was a pointed reminder of the financial and emotional commitment involved in the project. The conflict between them was emblematic of the broader issues Diana faced in her personal and public life during this period. Despite John's public and private efforts to reconcile, the strain on their friendship was significant. Their relationship remained strained until tragedy struck. On July 15, 1997, Johnny Versace, a close friend to both John and Diana, was murdered outside his Miami home. The death of the renowned fashion designer served as a catalyst for reconciling the estranged friends. John and Diana reunited to attend Versace's funeral, reflecting on their shared loss and the impact of their mutual friend's death. Their renewed connection, however, was short-lived. Just a few weeks after Versace's funeral, Diana died in a car crash in Paris on August 31, 1997. The shock and grief of Diana's sudden passing overshadowed the previous tensions between John and Diana, casting a somber light on their unresolved issues. In the aftermath of Diana's death, Elton John paid tribute to her in a deeply emotional way. He famously performed Candle in the Wind at her funeral a song that he had rewritten to honor Diana's life and legacy. However, the path to that poignant tribute was not as straightforward as it might seem. It was a performance that almost didn't happen, as revealed by documents released from the National Archives in 2021. These papers show that there were initial reservations from Buckingham Palace about allowing such a contemporary and emotionally charged performance during the solemnity of a royal funeral. The story begins with the very reverend Dr. Wesley Carr, the dean of Westminster at the time, who recognized the significance of Elton John's tribute to the public. Understanding the deep connection between Diana and Elton, and aware of how much she was loved by the public, Dr. Carr advocated strongly for the performance. He understood that Diana had transcended her royal status to become a global icon, representing modernity, compassion, and a connection to the common people. Therefore, a tribute that reflected her unique place in the world was essential. Dr. Carr penned a persuasive letter to the palace, arguing that even if the lyrics to Candle in the Wind were considered too sentimental by royal standards, allowing the performance would be a powerful and imaginative gesture. He highlighted that Diana had been a symbol of the modern world, a world of change and emotional expression that contrasted with the traditional stoic image of the monarchy. By allowing Elton John to perform, the royal family would be acknowledging this shift and honoring the legacy of a woman who had redefined what it meant to be a royal in the late 20th century. The dean's letter was a plea for the royal family to embrace boldness in a moment of national grief. He recognized that the country was not just mourning the loss of a princess, but also a woman who had touched the lives of millions with her warmth, compassion, and relatability. Elton John's performance would be a way to capture that emotion and connect with the public in a deeply personal way, 
something that was vital at a time when the monarchy itself was under intense scrutiny. Eventually, the palace agreed and Elton John was given the green light to perform. The singer, who had been a close friend of Diana's, was acutely aware of the importance of the moment. In interviews years later, he reflected on the enormous pressure he felt as he prepared to sing at the funeral. John knew that the entire world would be watching, and he was determined to deliver a performance that was both flawless and emotionally restrained, despite the personal grief he was experiencing. In a 2008 interview, Elton John recalled what was going through his mind during that historic performance. Don't sing a wrong note. Be stoic. Don't break down and just do it to the best you can possibly do it without showing any emotion whatsoever. It was a moment that demanded not just musical precision, but also immense emotional control. John's heart was racing, but he understood that his role was to honor Diana's memory in a way that would resonate with the millions of people who were grieving alongside him. The performance of Candle in the Wind 1997 became an iconic moment, one that captured the sorrow and the love of a nation in mourning. The lyrics, adapted from John's 1973 hit song about Marilyn Monroe, were rewritten by his longtime collaborator Bernie Topan to reflect Diana's life and legacy. The line, Goodbye England's Rose, May You Ever Grow in Our Hearts, became a poignant farewell to a woman who had touched the lives of so many, both in Britain and around the world. Despite its success, Elton John has often expressed that he would have preferred never to have had a reason to perform or record the song. In various interviews and in his autobiography, John has conveyed the deep sadness he feels when reflecting on the circumstances that led to the song's creation. I would never, ever perform either version of Candle in the Wind in front of William and Harry, John has said, underscoring the personal significance of the song and his desire to protect Diana's sons from further emotional distress. What do you think about the relationship between Elton John and Princess Diana? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.